Hey, what's up, my friends? Welcome to another exciting episode of Measuring Dev Skills with Code Signal. It's me, your friend Pat, and today we're going to look at a new type of task. This one is going to be a test driven development task. So, sort of continuing with the theme that we've had in the past few weeks about sort of closely resembling the actual dev experience. Again, we want to make sure that the interview question isn't something that's like totally irrelevant to the actual responsibilities of the job. So today we're going to get even deeper with that theme and we're, well, I guess we might as well go ahead and select the task. So let's go grab it. It's this one over here. So the first thing you'll probably notice about this one, if you're sort of accustomed to the code signal UI is basically we've got our IDE here. Okay. That that's kind of what we expect, right? We have like our, our description over here asking us what the problem is all about or telling us what the problem is all about. And then we have the IDE, but we don't really see any tests anywhere. I mean, in the past we would see tests over here. If it was an al algorithmic challenge or something of that nature, they'd be right in the uh, console window down here. Uh, we looked at one recently where we had our unit tests as actual files, again, sort of closely resembling like the, the app development experience. But in this case, we don't have either of those. Basically, the idea is that in this case, since it's based on test driven development, uh, the user or the candidate in this case is meant to write their own tests. So again, if you were developing an app, this is generally something we want to do, right? We have an idea of how we want it to work, but we need a way to measure that. In the real world, we're not going to have like a little console with all these tests written out uh, already. So we have to sort of specify what we want the thing to do and then build it out to do that thing. And our tests will indicate whether or not it's actually doing the thing that we want. Okay. so. Uh, this is also giving us an opportunity to talk about another thing that, that's come up recently, which is that the code single platform supports a lot of different languages. So notice in this case, we're using RSpec. So this is based on Ruby. It's a tool that, that's just for test driven development. So this isn't actually going to go to the Ruby compiler. It's basically just going to use these tools to, uh, to test the functionality over here. So if we were to go ahead and run what we have here, I, I mean, the task itself is asking us to implement a particular algorithm. And I guess that's worth talking about as well. I mean, if we wanted to design something like this for a particular type of algorithm or particular style of coding or something like that, uh, that's relevant to the job that we're looking for, we can totally make the challenge based on that. But for the sake of our discussion today, I actually just want to focus on what's already written over here. So if we take a look, there's basically, I mean, this part looks like just standard Ruby code over here, but then this is kind of more what we would expect from something like a testing framework. So in this case, we're giving some sort of expectation for what Squarer should do. Uh, we're saying specifically to test to see if it's going to square a number. We want to make an instance and then we're, we expect the square of two to be equal to four. So this is just giving us kind of like a general idea of like the sort of syntax that we can use over here for these R spec tests that we're going to write. So again, we want to write this stuff first where we sort of describe how this thing should work. And you know, we could flesh this out more. We could, we could uh, give it other tests in here. Uh, and then we want to, after that, write the actual thing that we want to test. So let's give this a try. Let's go ahead and uh, follow this message where it says your output will be displayed here after running code. Let's run the code and see what it does. So the first output, I mean, first of all, notice that was pretty fast. Again, it's not going through the standard Ruby compiler, so this can actually go pretty quick. Uh, if we look at this, it finished pretty fast, right? Uh, it says there is one example, zero failures. So I guess no surprise, right? This is doing the thing that we want it to. We start with a starting number. We are squaring it. We're multiplying it by itself. But we could say, well, what if it wasn't working properly? So either like maybe we change the code up here so that it's not actually squaring the number. And I just hit control R, just a, a nice little quality of life feature, make it a little easier, keyboard shortcuts. Um, so if we look at this, now we do have a failure. We expected four, we got two. So we get this, this nice output over here, like square or squares a number, this, this kind of stuff, right? Uh, based on the way we've written our test over here. 
So this is putting more of the expectations on the candidate. We're not sort of like preparing uh, everything for them to just like write the answer and then go with it. Uh, because this is the sort of thing that we might expect our candidate to have to be able to do as part of their day-to-day -day responsibilities. Uh, another thing we could have done is we could have maybe written the test wrong or, or yeah sorry written like the expectation wrong so this thing is doing the right thing but we didn't do the test properly and so it's not testing it properly so again that's another potential pitfall that this type of question is going to test for it's not just testing to see can the user actually implement the code but also can they write the tests can they follow the syntax over here can they actually uh put the correct expectation in here and then can they deliver on that so it, it all needs to sort of fall into place we need all the pieces of that okay so i think that about wraps it up for for our test driven development example over here so basically again this is just another way that the code signal interview platform can very closely resemble the actual responsibilities of an actual developer rather than just something that kind of gets an idea of someone's programming proficiency but doesn't actually really closely reflect the job they'll be doing so this ensures that we're getting you know the the, the top pick the best suited candidate for the job okay so join us again next week where we're going to be talking about something a, a little bit different we're going to be moving away from this type of task and into something a little bit different so Look forward to that. I'll see you again next week. Thanks for tuning in and uh, bye for now.